Okay, we're back. We're live looking to the east, looking to Japan, looking to Kobe, Japan, with Steve Zercher. And today we're going to talk about the most remarkable band in Japan in the last 10 years. And let me tell you the name. It's AKB48. AKB48. Hi, Steve. It's so nice to talk to you. Thank you so much, Jay. It's a pleasure. Great. Well, can you, can you tell us why you, um, a, a teacher in uh, Gansai Gadai University um, in business and entrepreneurship, uh, would like to talk about a, a band of young women? Why? What interests you about them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess I need to make a disclaimer. I'm not a fan of this band. Okay. In fact, uh, the first time I looked at their videos was to, was to prepare for this uh, discussion with you, Jay. But uh, you teach a marketing class. I do that every semester at Kansai Gaidai. And I have the students do a case study on Asian pop music and the economic impact that has in Korea, in China, and in Japan. And how that contrasts with the pretty much the dominance of Western music and on the international uh, scene. So it's usually Western music that dominates, and so Japanese people, Korean people, Chinese people, all are fans of Western music. But over the last uh, maybe 20 years, there's been a growing phenomenon of the success of Asian music. Uh, probably the best example of that in the last 10 years is a Korean song, and I'm sure, Jay, you probably may remember this, it was called Ganyam Style by a, a kind of a low-level Korean musician named Sa. He was not well known in his country, but he released this video and it went viral. I checked this morning before our call, and 3.5 billion. Oh, jeez. That's with a B. 3.5 billion views. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, almost popular popular as, popular. that's almost as popular as that's almost as popular as Think Tech Away. Oh, say not, Jay. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so anyway, uh, you know, I've, I've been doing this case study in the class on Asian pop, and uh, one of the things that we look at is Japan pop music, which has not been so successful uh, internationally as uh, Korean music has. Uh, there's this example of Ganyam style. And also, there's a band from Korea right now that has international success. It's actually very popular in America. It's called BTS. That's a boy band. Mm -hmm. So that's like One Direction. Or I don't know how familiar, Jay, you are with uh, boy bands and girl bands. I'm kind of guessing maybe not. Full disclosure, I know nothing about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So AKB48 started just about 10 years ago, and it's the creation of a, a marketing genius, basically. He, and this guy was in the music industry, and uh, he decided what he would do was create a very large group of young women and form them into a band called AKB48, and 48 is indicating the number of people that are in the band, although I read that they actually have over 100 affiliated with this band. Maybe they have rotating memberships, so they have touring bands as well. So just about 10 years ago, he created this, and they produced their very first song, and it became a huge hit. The reason why this is so interesting from a marketing perspective is that Japan has had a history of successful, what they call idol. These are pop musicians that become very famous. But they're viewed from a distance. You see them in the concerts, but they don't really interact with their fans directly. And the genius behind this particular band was that he made these idols, these females in the band, accessible to the public. So they would perform on a nightly basis in a theater in Akihabara, which is kind of the tech area of Tokyo. And then after that, uh, if you had the proper ticket or you paid the, paid the right fee, you would actually be able to interact. You could meet the girls that were your favorite. 
in this band. Mm -hmm. This was the first time anybody had done this type of thing, making the talent, making these idols, making these pop stars uh, available to the fans at various meetings and so forth. And mm -hmm. it just took off. They have sold 60 million CDs over the last 10 years. They're the most popular female band in Japan ever. They're the second most popular band in Japan ever. So just to give you a context, uh, maybe, Jay, are you a Led Zeppelin fan by any chance? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I would have to disclose no on that one. That one as well. Okay, well, I, I am. I'm a Led Zeppelin fan, and they're one of the most famous in all bands. They have sold worldwide the equivalent number of records, 60 million. Ah. So AKB in Japan primarily has sold the equivalent number of records or CDs as Led Zeppelin, which is an internationally famous band, uh, you know, from the 1970s and 1980s. Yeah, in a longer period so of time. the strategy that they use... Uh, Led Zeppelin would have been a much longer period of time. Much longer period of time. Let me let me ask you a question about the, you know so uh, AKB sounds like Akibara doesn't it? it sounds like the neighborhood AKB what does it stand for? Yeah, that's 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 you're probably right, Jay. That's a very good guess. I'm not sure, but I would say that that's probably where it comes from because they set up a theater in Akibara. And rather than having, you know, tours and periodic shows, they actually perform every night so their fans can get access and see them. So That's incredible. This, so you, know, you say whole, that you the say that there's originally 48, yeah. 48 young ladies, but in fact, many more than that. And I guess my question is, it how, how does this right. promoter handle over the last 10 years, how does he handle the comings and goings? Because if you want to make them iconic, you want to make each one you know, a darling of the generation, so to speak, and I and I guess it's the millennial generation oh. mostly. Um, but what happens when they leave? What happens when it replaces well, them? Well, that, Jay, as usual, you're asking excellent questions. So the guy who created this, his name's Akimoto, he figured out that what he could do to generate interest in this band is that the general public here in Japan would see all of these different girls, and every year he would have an election and ask the fans to vote for their favorite. So the girls ended up being ranked, you know, like a college football team or like American Idol or something like that. So it's a, a mixture of pop music and marketing and democracy of voting. So every year, there'd be the number one girl, the number two girl, the number three girl, and uh, this would generate more interest in the band. The number of people who vote in the elections was just astronomical. It was national news whenever this tally was finally recorded. <laughs> and then, as you ask in the question, when these girls, they're targeting maybe like 17, 18, to like 22, 23. When the girls begin to get 24, 25, they're kind of aging out of the age limitations that are set up on the band. So if the girls are particularly popular, um, they are given like a goodbye party or a goodbye celebration. Oh, no. Some have gone on <laughs> to create their own independent careers. Uh -huh. But he used that aspect when the girls graduated, quote unquote, from the band, that turned into a major marketing event as well. So it's, it's all about marketing. This guy figured out, okay, this is how Japanese pop music works. Uh -huh. the, the pop idols are not accessible. I'll make these girls accessible. He writes the music for them. So these girls who are 18 years old are singing songs written by a 60-year-old guy. And uh, he's controlled all aspects of this. And I, I can't imagine how much money he's made. It's just been a phenomenal amount. Well, I, know, I noticed they're all the good-looking. marketing promotions. All, all of them are good looking uh, and, yeah. and young and well and well dressed. They're pretty, they present very well. But, you know, query, are they, are they talented? Do they, can they actual, actually sing? Is the music worth listening to or is that sort of secondary? Uh, it's not even secondary. I'd say that that's tertiary or maybe even further down. <laughs> uh, you know, this is again my opinion. Uh, Japanese pop music is almost unlistenable. 
uh, in most instances. Now, there are some exceptions. There's some very good Japanese singers and uh, so forth. But usually this type of music, when we Westerners hear it, it it's almost, almost borders on torture. But that's not the point. The point is they're cute. You can meet them. You know, you can vote for them and so forth. Just to show you how maybe extreme the market goes, about five years ago, they came up with this campaign. And basically it was called Make a Baby with AKB48. So, Jay, I know you've been married a long time. You're not in the single dating pool, but there are services. Full disclosure, right, Jay? All right, yes, full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there are dating services where you can send your picture in and then match it with a picture of a prospective woman that you want to go out on. And then they'll merge your pictures together and have a picture of what your baby potentially would look like. So AKB48 did this and ran a campaign. So if you became an AKB club member, which is like maybe $15 or $20 a month, you can send your picture to the website with the girl that you like the most, and then they would send you back a picture showing what potentially your son or your daughter would look like if you were to have a child with this girl. Oh, so my God. Oh, my God. It's, that, it's facial well, recognition. I know. It's, yeah, and it's uh, well, AI. Yeah. It's artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they were, yeah, doing photo matching. So this ran like 2011, 2012. I remember catching it in the news services. I talked about it with my students, and most of them were grossed out about it. But anyway, that just showed the extent of the marketing to try to get the fans involved. And last thing, Jay, in your question before, you would think that the, the fan base uh, for this band would be younger women, but actually it's not. It's older guys. Ah. So they create a fantasy relationship with the AKB48 members, and then they say, okay, buy the CD, buy the membership, the club membership, buy the ticket that allows you to go and meet these girls, and you can meet your favorite one there, which I guess <laughs> would be a big thrill if you were really interested in that. And as a result, the number of sales per individual Rather than just buying one CD, they would buy one or two or three or four, then they would vote for their favorite girl to try and increase her ranking in this annual election and so forth. So there was one guy who bought 530 CDs of AKB48. <laughs> one guy. <laughs> I know. Remarkable. Well, you know what I would like to study with you, Steve? I would like to study this from the point of view of... Um, you know, the, the marketing, namely the identification of those elements in the Japan community, in the Japan culture, uh, that, would, that would allow this to happen, where this guy, um, he said to himself, well, I, I, I want to take advantage. I want to, I'm, I'm an opportunist. I want to take advantage of these aspects of Japan culture, and I want to market around that. I want to create this and make all this money. And I would like, you know, you know, a, a sort of a discussion, if, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, with you in the classroom and you have your students and uh, you're trying to identify what yeah. is it exactly that the guy, what is the magic, the secret sauce? Let's take a, a short break, Steve, and we'll come back and we'll, yeah. and we'll look, we'll analyze this okay. from an academic point of view. All right, we'll be right back. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanneman. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, my name is Victoria and I'm a host at the Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration between U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses, talk about how to start a business, talk about great tips for small business owners. Uh, please join us every Thursday, 11 a.m. at Think Tech Hawaii 
A isso, mahalo. Yeah, looking to the east with Steve Zercher, who joins us by phone from Kobe, Japan. And we're talking about a band there called AKB48, Akihabara, a neighborhood, AKB48, right. which is a, 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 a ladies only, women only, young women only band that is extraordinarily successful through some really brilliant yeah. marketing in Japan. So can, right. can you talk about, can we sort of, you know, unpack exactly what the, the promoter is looking at in order to achieve this extraordinary popularity? Well, I think there's a couple of cultural phenomena that are behind this. Uh, the one is that uh, there is kind of an adulation of young women in Japan, a kind of a commercialization of this. Mm -hmm. And it's connected with a sense of acuteness. It's called kawaii. So women in Japan and also men in Japan like to see the women that are depicted in the pictures that you've shown here. Uh, like AKB48. So you see that in multiple areas uh, in Japanese culture. So I think this band is based on that general preference to look at and to enjoy looking at, I guess, uh, younger women, usually in the 18 to 24 year old range. Mm -hmm. So, but then on top of that, uh, what he's built is a marketing mechanism or marketing strategy that takes advantage of this cultural uh, uh, or cultural distinction of Japan and allows, as I mentioned before, access to these idols. So they become idols, not just in a remote sense, but in an, an engaged sense, that if you really are interested in meeting these girls, you can at these various events. So it's, uh, he kind of led the way Japanese pop grew over the last 10 years. There's lots of knockoff bands that are very similar now ah, in Japan. Ah. Uh, they're nowhere near as successful as AKB48, but there's, you know, they, they, they have them in categories. There's the A-level bands and the B-level bands and the C-level bands. And uh, you can see them at various retail stores or restaurants. They're used to promote products and services of all kinds. So he really changed how marketing is being done when it came to Japanese pop music, with Japanese uh, idol music. It's and as far as how, how this has been succeeding outside, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, I, I think it's brilliant. Um, he, he managed to touch, uh, you know, essential elements yeah. of, the, of the Japanese culture as it exists today. All the things you and I have talked about in Japan, how the right. young people and maybe not so young people, you know, see others, how they get along together. Um, and, and frankly, it sounds like it's, uh, it's a Japanese-only type of cultural, um, a cultural environment where this kind of marketing would only work in Japan. For example, if you applied this in, in the U.S., first thing I would think about is, is Me Too. Um, isn't, isn't this um, you know, somehow demeaning women? Uh, and the other aspect is you say they can only go to a certain age. Well, isn't this age discrimination of a sort? I really wonder, I mean, not to say that those are serious legal obstacles, but uh, they're, they're cultural obstacles anyway in the U.S., and maybe the same approach wouldn't work here. What do you think? I, I, I agree with you. The, they do have a, a series of different bands that are similar to AKB48, and they're marketed by the same company, but they're all in Asia. Um, so there's one in Indonesia, there's one in Thailand, and so forth. So AKB48 has gone to America and participated in uh, concerts there or um, various celebrations of some sort. Like uh, there's one reference I have. Uh, they went to, to Washington, D.C. in 2012 to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the cherry blossom the cherry trees that are in Washington, D.C. that were given by the Japanese government. So they've gone there, but they really have not caught on. And I definitely agree with you that the reason AKB48 has not taken off in America is are the cultural elements of this. Japan, uh, you know, from a Western perspective, if you look at the success of women in, in the Japanese business environment, it's quite limited. 
Japan is still struggling with equality when it comes to allowing women to have equal access to higher level positions and so forth. The number of managers in Japan uh, is quite low relative to the United States. The number of high level executives is below 5%. The number of women on, at director levels on the board is below 1%. So Japan, I, don't, I want to be culturally sensitive here, but from our perspective, uh, use women in a much different way than we do uh, it, with a more of a sense of women's roles are more strictly defined to home-based types of activities are certainly uh, this marketing element of, of young women, and you could say exploitation of young women. That's something that is accepted here in Japan, and mm -hmm. you don't get pushed back on. The Me Too a phenomenon that's not really occurred in Japan. There are some instances of women suing, going after women, who, uh, men who have harassed them. There's a couple high-profile cases, but it's nothing like what's occurred in the United States. What strikes so me, is, with, I think, uh, primarily in Japan. What, what sorry, strikes me? Primarily strikes Japan me. phenomenon. With some limited success. Yeah. Yeah. What I was going to was going to ask you about was this. Um, you know the, the the magic here. It's not it's not the only magic, but one of the significant magic tricks involved in this um, is the notion of voting for your favorite. And uh, although you know uh, the the view of women is different in Japan and the U.S. and maybe in Europe too, um, but the idea of voting for your favorites and having some some kind of internet connection with your favorite member of the band. I think to some extent that exists here already. I mean, having an internet connection with the, your favorite member of the band, but voting for them, that's really kind of, that's kind of interesting. And I, and I suggest to you, Steve, that mm. that kind of engagement could work in the mm. U.S. I don't know about the other things, they sound very Japan-centric, but the idea of picking one or picking one out of a, a group of candidates. I mean, we're into that, aren't we, with the national elections, aren't we? we we're into picking candidates. And if the promoter yeah. gets up and says, well, I want to add somebody to the band, you decide who it is. This is like so many of those uh, shows where they, where they vote for the talent, right? Um, and I think this is, this is a ripe yeah. pomegranate in the U.S. This could work in the U.S., no? Well, you know, I, I think if we look at our current president, there's a certain element of this kind of fan support, right? So mm -hmm. in Japan, there's the AKB fan army, and the other bands have dedicated fans who go to these events and join the clubs and vote for the members and so forth. So. We have a president of the United States who has a core group of followers who are somewhat similar to the fans of AKB48. You know, they're dedicated to him and supportive of him, and you know, no matter what, they're going to vote for him. So I think some of this marketing phenomenon that's been applied to AKB48, you can see in the United States, maybe at, at the election level. Also, uh, some bands uh, or some uh, artists, I, me I mentioned to you earlier that uh, uh, Taylor Swift, so she sells regular CDs, but she also sells deluxe CDs. And within those deluxe CDs, they're her personal journals. So she's beginning to share herself in the same sense the AKB48 members share themselves with their fans. So she's adopted that policy to sell CDs at a higher value. And also Travis Scott, who's a rapper, he's quite uh, popular right now, is in bundling merchandise with his music as well. So some of the popular American uh, idols, American uh, pop stars are doing something similar uh, to AKB48, but but not as as wild and not as a, as extended, and you know doesn't involve the voting aspect of it. At least, and Taylor Swift is one one just one individual star, so, mm -hmm. and Travis Scott is just one individual star. I don't know in America. I can't really think of is there an equivalent band where there'd be like thirty members? Maybe, I, I don't uh, know. You know the. the Power, power back in the old days, but you know, usually bands are smaller. Mm -hmm. Maybe this would apply to some of the boy bands. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have voting for which member that uh, the girls thought was the cutest or the nicest, and so forth. And then that would maybe encourage greater uh, 
connection, maybe some greater sales of the CDs and so forth for these boy bands. Yeah, I think this is this is part of um, sort of a, a global uh, evolution to connect social media with music and talent and um, and I icons, uh, uh, you know, like this iconic people. Um, and uh, you know, it's never been as much right. as it is now. But I, you know, <clears throat> I think it. I think we have to look to the future of it. And certainly, it has made a huge impression and been usually successful in Japan. I think maybe this kind of thing will happen uh, elsewhere in, in sort of European cultures. But my question to you is, 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 this, is this a fad? Because in Japan, we know they have fads, and they don't last all that long. In this case, it's lasted, oh, yeah. improved for 10 years, but it still may be a fad. And if it is a fad, yeah. when will it decline, and what will it evolve to what will be the next step in you know in this trans this transition to internet hyphen entertainment hyphen music hyphen politics yeah um it may be coming to an end so this year the band announced that for the first time they wouldn't have the general election where the fans can vote for the individual members so it could be that this is coming to an end or beginning. Maybe uh, the, the guy who created this is saying, okay, we've had a great run for 10 years, and I've made you know half a billion dollars off of this. So who knows how much money he's made? I'm sure it's a huge amount. Uh, so it may be beginning to wind down in Japan. So what's after that? Mm, I don't know. You know I, I, I know about AKB48 because of my marketing interest. I, I don't pay much attention to Japanese pop music. Uh, I can actually, I actually, this, this uh, case study, I'm doing it on Wednesday here in Japan. So I'll ask the class members, I mean, they, all of them have heard of AKB48, the foreigners. I mean, you're inundated. You cannot go literally anywhere in Japan without seeing something from AKB48 on the trains, the billboards, the music, on TV. They're just ubiquitous. So, but uh, if they do indeed begin to wind down, I can ask my class what they think would be coming up behind it. We're I, almost, I don't know. We're almost out of time, to, Steve. We're almost there. out of time. I, yeah, I, I would be interested in knowing. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other thing here is uh, I want to thank you for uh, introducing me to the subject, because as I disclosed earlier, I know nothing about bands, either in Japan or in the United States. Um, <laughs> and now I feel that I am enriched, that I know a lot more. And uh, I think you and I have something more in common now. We both know at least a little bit about these bands. And maybe, maybe next time for our next show, we can, we can sing together, Steve. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, there's hope for us, Jay. There's a, a band that's a kind of middle-aged guy, and they tour at various... Um, uh, they're called onsens. Are you familiar with onsens? They're, they're outdoor springs. Yes. And the target market for this band is older women. And I saw them on TV. So there's a group of middle-aged guys, and they have a tremendous fan base of middle-aged women. So this is not limited strictly to women, young women. Jay, you and I, we could actually form a band, and maybe we could be successful here in Japan. Okay, Steve. Steve Zercher, hold that thought. You never know what will happen. Steve Zercher, thank you so much. Look forward to our next discussion. In the meantime, happy yeah, thank Thanksgiving. You, it's a pleasure. you take care. Aloha. Sayonara. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>